seat. No, Jeff, you were late. I passed. I wasn't again. late. You no, he was late. on it. How can I be perfect. late for my I, segment? Again, a little the bar. A little, a I can't be late. late for my All segment. Right. All right. What do you got? And we'll start out with bad beats. Uh, they're always tough, and if you're into sports gambling, and you've been in the game long enough, we've all gone through it. Uh-huh. But this this is totally different because Rob Hunt's just cashed in big time. He entered a million-dollar daily fantasy contest, and it all came down to the Bears and Rams game. And when the clock hit zero, Hunts was in first place, and he had won one million dollars. What? At this point, he celebrated big time. He called up his boss. I will never work for you again. Look at you. <laughs> you think you're an important man? Is that what you think? You are a laughing stock. You are a joke. These people are laughing at you. You're nothing. You have no brains, no ability, nothing. I quit. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, a half hour later, his world came crumbling down. No. Oh, no. Because a late sack by the Bears defense was later corrected to a tackle for a loss. And with that stack correction, oh. Hunts lost $997,000. Oh, my God. All Wait. right, so if you think you're oh, having a bad horrible. day, it can always be worse. So, what, is that like deducted a point from his fantasy stats? It w- Yeah, so... It was a the, yeah, they, they deemed for, it yeah, yeah. They, they deemed it to be a run which is a tackle for a loss yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yards he went are from, taken away from the he went from up. first place by himself right. to tied for sixth place and cashing it with three grand look three grand is great but when a half hour ago you were promised a million dollars and you're quitting your job wow and you got to go back to your boss and say hey man just kidding. Just kidding on My that bad. one. No, no, this is the second time in a row you have referenced that scene from Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't play the other. I didn't play. I didn't play the, the follow up. Okay. Because I've already done that. Okay. So we're mixing it in. Wow, yeah. he's kind of calling you out and here. I, well, yeah, I I'm mean, just saying yeah, this I wouldn't all. appreciate the, it if I'm, I was I'm you. I'm sorry. Pat. Did the did the scene fit? I blame Jamie. Did the scene fit? It did. Perfect. <laughs> and we'll move on. Come when, on, Jamie. When you're employed, you sometimes get comfortable. You think maybe you have more job security than you do, and you get a little chesty. Uh huh. You might also buy into company rivalries, right? So, like, so let's say hypothetically you work at McDonald's. You might say to the press that bur- the Burger King Yumbo sucks, or. <laughs> Say, if you work at Pepsi, you might say in front of a camera that new Coke was trash. But then, then you lose your job, and you're unemployed, and the Hulu bill is due, and your account says LOL. And then that company that you were talking crap on suddenly looks pretty good. Uh Uh-huh. And that seems to be what happened to new Sixers coach Dan Burke. Burke used to be the coach of the Pacers, and when he was the coach of the Pacers, he had some pretty choice words about the Philadelphia 76ers, so take a listen. It wasn't because of Philly. It's because where we want to go. And, uh, yeah, I hate that team. I really wanted to win that game. Um, I think Embiid gets away with a bunch of crap the league ignores, (laughs) and uh, it would have been. Then he got fired in the offseason by the Pacers and was out of work. And his wife has grown accustomed to a certain lifestyle, like Carabas and HBO Max. <laughs> so, and uh, he was hired yesterday by that team he was talking crap on, the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid, we can enjoy together what the league lets me get away with. Yeah, we played the cut at the time it, w- it happened. Like, the next day after he said it, we played it on the show, and we're like, uh, this idiot, uh, what a jerk. Now he works for us. So that's can't fun. beat him, join him. Yeah, can't beat him, join him. So what's the lifestyle again? Caraba and what yeah. else? Carabas and HBO Max. You oh, have, HBO Max. You, yeah. You have a different gauge for what you think rich people are. Well, you, you, well it's where you, you look up from, Mark. Exactly. You know, it, like we, we, you know, you when you're at look the at, curb, right? you want to get onto the grass. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm at, not. I'm not living in palatial houses with ghost sex swings. You're on the uh, the, 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 the combo. <laughs> what do you call it? The, <laughs> was that an added feature? That was late. That was late. <laughs> the arriving joke in my mind. Thank you. Uh, the um, it hit. I got it now. Thank you. You guy looking up at the Carabas people, going, "Oh wow, look at you!" Right. That's you. Yeah, I, wow. I can only afford Carabas if I have a coupon. There. That's why Applebee's gets a lot of run from Pat yeah, Egan. Right. I, my coupons are plentiful. Look, my career goal is to walk into an Applebee's after ramen noodles. Oh, God. Daily? Daily? Yeah. We need them carbs for that hockey plan. Look, my W-2 says LOL on it. It's, well, it's not great. What's the what's the dessert, a frozen dessert cake? The, the, that looks like the fancy vanilla thing. Oh, God, I can't Where, remember. Where, at Applebee's? No, 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 no. It's like you buy it in the freezer at your oh. gro- local grocery store. And there's a famous meme now that always, always makes its way around saying, when I was a kid, I thought this was the height of elegance. Oh, I, know, I do, do you know, know what I'm yes. talking about? Yeah, because it does. That to you, you is it. still what like rich people do. Yeah, I can't afford that. I don't even know how much it is. 
It's too expensive I for remember, me. I'm I with remember, you, Pat. I remember looking at it in the freezer and wanting it, but afraid to ask my mom because it was only for rich people. I was always told that if I Bologna can't reach peanut it, butter. You if ever I try? can't, no. I was always told that if I can't reach it on the shelf, it's too expensive for me. And when you're cereal as a kid, oh yeah, box yeah, yeah. Okay. And right. I graduated. Look, I got my life. <laughs> Look, my cinnamon got life got over here. That's not money. bad. I had some of that during the break. It's, it's good, good stuff. All right. Yeah. We'll, got that magnet money. Anyway, sorry. And we'll ahead. move on. We touched on this a little bit yesterday, <laughs> but I'll bring it up for the people that may have missed it. JT Romito officially became a free agent when the final out was recorded in the World Series. Yeah. A lot of folks think he's gone. I'm not one of them. Just want to be on the record. Uh, and according to Jim Salisbury, Romito doesn't want to leave. Uh-huh. Apparently, having fans actually cheer for you, which is something he didn't have in Miami, might have actually had a positive effect. Who would have thought? Have fans in Miami. Yeah, he had more fans during a global pandemic in Philly than he had in Miami. Yeah, right. That's literal. That's yeah. one of the few things yes. where you can say literal and it's actually literal. Also not keen on playing in New York either for the Mets or Yankees, but he will begrudgingly do it if they give him a record-setting contract. Oh, isn't that... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, 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 I'll go I, if you I give me $200 million. Yeah. Story. I read the same story and I was just like, oh, it's so oh, money. Yeah, money. It, it's like he's packing his bags and saying at the same time, "Yeah, I don't want to go anywhere." Yeah, I mean, I'll move to Baghdad for two hundred million. Yeah, what are you talking about, money? That's pretty much what's happening. What else you got? How about uh, Kazakhstan? Would you move there? Yeah, it's beautiful this okay. time of year. Uh, they, have, they have a new uh, marketing campaign. Uh, so I missed this yesterday, and I want to thank Anthony Gargano and Andrew Salchunas for pointing this out yesterday on the Midday Show. Rob Manfred has had a tough year, right? He dealt with Ugh. the Miami Marlins milk gate the Astros cheating scandal, his tone-deaf response to social injustice. He even had a GM on camera saying that Manfred didn't have a clue. But he was able to get through a 60-game season despite his incompetence. He also called the champion tr- trophy a piece of metal, if I'm not mistaken. Look, there was only so many things I could put in a all story, right. you know, including all the takes. So, <laughs> with the World Series raging on, looking like it was going to end, it seems like Manfred hit the bar. Uh-huh. Manfred, who is clearly a Zima, awards at the end of the night, including the MVP award. So, take a listen to Manfred and tell me if he's blitzed. Corey, you thrilled our fans throughout the postseason with a great performance. You led the Dodgers to a World Series victory, and it's my pleasure to recognize your great play with the Willie Mays Most Valuable Player Award presented by Chevrolet. Yeah, now, in his defense... Well, that's uncomfortable. Well, the, the, okay, the defense he's going with is that it doesn't sound like Bob on a Tuesday night at around 7.01. So was he drunk or not? <laughs> um, I will say the first thing that came to mind was Colorado Rockies. Yeah, that's, yeah, and that's what Andrew said yesterday. Oh, is it? That's and the okay. first thing he thought of. Yeah. And earlier in the presentation ceremony, when he came out, he started and got booed so loudly that it seemed like he was startled by it. And he stopped for about ten seconds. Now, whether that was the earpiece or whether he was totally taken off guard that all eleven thousand people in unison were booing him, I don't know. Yeah. That's uh well he, it's because he sucks that he got booed. Yeah, he's not very good. <laughs> he is by far the worst the worst commissioner. He, and I always thought it was it he was always thought Batman. It was Batman. Batman yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Batman looks like incredible compared Bat- to Bat- him. Batman and uh right now uh Adam Silver are the two guys that uh that could like they could run for office and probably win. Okay, Batman could not win as a vice president. No. What? He's and we'll Canadian. Move on. Is he, ca- is he Canadian? I don't, I don't know. know. I just yeah. assume he's since he's a hockey guy. I think he's Canadian. Gary Bevins from North Jersey? I thought he was from North Jersey. The northern th- part that goes into Canada? Yeah, I don't think... I don't think... Maine? I don't think we're claiming him. No, we're not... We're, what? What's not claiming him? America? You rock a bing on it while I do the birthdays, okay? Okay, sure. Go for it. Former Bills and Titans New running York. back... New York. He's from New York. Okay. Yeah, debatable. He turns 69 next year. He's from York. Nice. He's not from New York. He's from York. Uh, former Bills and Titans running back Travis Henry. I personally wonder what his 11 kids will be getting him first birthday. Oh, right. Yes. Former Olympic swimmer Amanda Beard. She posed for Playboy. Oh, yeah. And I looked at it. What's up? Yeah, it was cool. She had very blue eyes. It was she, cool. She had, she it had, was cool. All right, what else She had blue eyes. <laughs> yes. She helped me become a man. Good for you. Former Ohio State Buckeye and Mike Shanahan mistake Maurice Claret. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a rough one. Yeah. yeah. Former Philly great Ender Enciarte celebrates a birthday today. He was on the team Wait, for about what? 12 minutes as a Rule 5 draft pick and was sent back to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Gotcha. Uh, current Eagles guard Isaac Sayamalu. 
boy, I didn't know how good you were until <laughs> Soa Opeta showed <laughs> yeah, up. the rest of the sh- <laughs> yes, And exactly. it's Cowboys quarterback Andy Dalton's birthday, although he probably isn't aware because oh, he's... Oh, no. Uh, the only thing too soon? Too, yeah, soon? too soon. Too soon. And yeah. we'll move on too to today soon. in history. In yes. 1960, Cassius Clay well, had his first professional fight. He won in six rounds. Okay. He later changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Uh-huh. Had Heard of a him. good career. 1981, Bill Giles led a group to purchase the Phillies for just over $30 million, which is slightly more than Jake Arrieta made this season. <laughs> In nice. 2001, Bud Selig announced that Major League Baseball was considering eliminating two teams by the start of 2002. Montreal Expos were a lock, and then the other two were the Twins and Marlins. Obviously, none of them got contracted, wow. but the Montreal Expos didn't move. Yeah. 2009, the Phillies lost Game 2 of the World Series to future Philly great A.J. Burnett. Oh, okay. gross. Yeah, yeah. no, so totally about gross. that, yeah. 2011, Joe Paterno broke the record for most victories by a D1 football coach. Uh-huh. And in 2008, the Phillies won their second World Series. There it is. Third thing in two. <laughs> Phillies are world champions. I also almost lost my virginity that night, something I'm still attempting to do. Almost. And that. Yeah, no, well, whoa. no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, we almost? have a question on that. Almost. Just, okay, yeah, what? Who was the Somebody, lady? Yeah. No personal questions. <laughs> and you can't, you can't how do you almost that. like? Yeah, no personal questions to a personal statement. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. There was a girl in a bar. She high fived me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a shot. That's second base in the Egan household. And that. Oh, wait. <laughs> all right, that's yeah, all it takes. Yeah, 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 boy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Patty. Mark Farzetta with Bob Cooney and Jamie Lynch. Mornings on 97.5 The Fanatic, <laughs> Philadelphia. Philadelphia.